local option uh, tax. Now, the, one of the really complicated factors is the, the voters are not going to vote on just the tax. They're going to vote on the plan. Hello? You don't, you don't put something like that on the ballot. I mean, the, the voters, that's not what you put on the ballot. You can put a, a big picture concept on the ballot and ask voters to vote on it, but you don't ask the voters to vote on a particular bridge somewhere or a particular bypass. So that's my argument in the 12th district. Uh, I think a statewide uh, sales tax referendum would be much easier to administer, and I think it is below the Okay, thank you. Let's move on to education. Yes? Excuse me. All right, let's move on to education. Um, I think we have a number of reforms have been suggested over the years. Uh, one is would be the idea of merit pay for teachers. What are your views on that? I, I don't. I really don't uh, think that that's a, a good system to uh, to start in Georgia right now. Uh, I think that all things being equal, that merit pay could work. But all things are not equal. All school systems systems are not equal. All regions of our state are not equal. We have students from inner city. Uh, who are struggling with environmental issues that cause them to perform uh, less than uh, students who may be in a more uh, productive part of our state. Uh, and I think that anytime you have merit pay, I think that you are saying to teachers that, listen, because that student is not doing what they're supposed to be doing or whether or not that student care. Listen, I, I've been in classrooms um, in standardized testing events where students would go and just mark the answer on on the test. So when you have a situation where students will go down and mark the answers on test and don't care, you could have a caring teacher and that teacher is penalized because students are not caring about what they do. So I don't think merit pay needs to be employed in Georgia right now, especially when you, when you keep cutting the pay that teachers already have. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ford, what do you do on merit pay? Merit pay is a bit thought of and tried to pass. There's no way to quantify it. What we've got to do is give teachers the tools they need in the classroom. Uh, the government will this year want to do away with rewarding teachers by advanced degrees and put in merit pay, uh, which has never been successfully done anywhere in the country. The reason is because the teacher has to take whatever comes in that classroom and to put, uh, which have different levels of learning and skills and background. There's no way to quantify it in any way. I've taken a school in my district when I chaired education, Saxon Heights Elementary, K through three, had some of the lowest reading scores in the state. I chaired education, I figured if anybody could do something about it, I should. We didn't blame the teachers like one other candidate in this race did before. We gave the teachers the support they needed by having small classroom support technology and 100% run participation. Within a year, we turned that school around to one of the, the top eight plus type one reading schools in the state by giving the teachers the support they needed to produce the miracles in that classroom. If we do that, they will do the job. So if we give the small classroom support technology and bring families into the school system, we can do that statewide, which is why merit paid to, to engage them on some arbitrary uh, you know, standard, when, what we need to do is set out the goals of expectations, uh, reward teachers for the advanced degrees, keep them the professionals they are, and reward them And by doing that, we'll show success, we'll do that statewide. I've done it, I know we can do it statewide. Mr. Poitras, uh, your views on merit pay? Uh, we actually already have a formal merit pay in Georgia. We do recognize advanced degrees. There's a significant uh, increase in pay for a master's degree, for a PhD, uh, and similarly for a national teacher certification. So we already have a, a form of merit pay. Uh, the problem comes, as, as Carl pointed out, the problem comes when you try to tie a teacher's pay to a child's performance, particularly if you do it uh, under the rubric of the, of the current national legislation, which ties that, which sets a national standard and if that child does not make that standard the teacher and the school are penalized no matter where the child was when he came into class so you could have a child who's three grades behind 
at the end of the year he's caught up by two and the teacher still gets penalized. Well, that's not fair. It's plainly not fair. Uh, there's a good bit of discussion at the national level about going to something called uh, uh, relative progress, and that is you, you measure the child's performance at the beginning of the year and you measure it at the end of the year. Uh, I think that makes a fair amount of sense. The teachers that I listen to uh, have no problem with being accountable. They are very concerned about a former government who said teachers are a problem, just beat them up enough and they'll behave and everything will be fine. Uh, they have a big problem with that kind of an attitude and, and the prospect of being punished, in effect, financially for something that they cannot control. Merit pay, per se, is not bad. Making it legitimate and making it accurate is the problem. That is true. Okay, let, let's look at another potential reform of education. And that's the idea of providing vouchers for parents and pay for them to go aware of. Uh, Ms. Ford, what are your views on that? I think vouchers are an absolute non-starter. Uh, the, there are the Republican, the Republican candidates that you will hear uh, earlier or later this evening, uh, as far as I know, most, perhaps all of them, have signed up to the idea of universal vouchers. That is, the state uh, writes mom and dad a $5,000 check for each child, one check per child per year, and the, and the parent is supposed to go into some sort of mythical uh, private sector marketplace for public, for public education and buy the education. Well, there's a whole lot of things wrong with that picture. In the first place, $5,000 wouldn't buy, doesn't buy you much of an education. In the second place, there's no marketplace uh, in the sense that I think they would have us believe. In a, in, a, in a larger context, it would amount to the state of Georgia turning its back on its constitutional obligation, which is written in the state constitution of Georgia, to provide a free public education to every child in Georgia. If we turn our back on that, what CEO is going to come to the state of Georgia, where we're in a, basically an 18th century educational model? It would be catastrophic for the economic future of the state. It is a bad idea and one that we should absolutely not consider. All the other candidates talk about how uh, they opposed it, but I've stayed in the trenches to fight against vouchers. It is wrong. It is not the way to approach it. It is a, kind of an easy out, easy excuse. We've got to give uh, our schools the resources we need. We've cut money in the last, not we, Purdue has cut money in the past eight years, even when the economy was good. Vouchers is, is something that sounds good. It's never worked. It hasn't been implemented anywhere in the country because it does not work. There is that constitutional responsibility uh, to educate our children. It is in Georgia's constitution. It's the number one challenge we have to turn education in Georgia around. Um, vouchers is absolutely the wrong way to do it. it it's, it's kind of that sound like bumper sticker populism that uh, you'll hear about in the